So it's been a very long time since I've made a DBS video. Um, I've stepped back from the entire scene and I felt like I should give my opinion on why. Currently this game is, I'd say in a weird downward spiral where you see a lot of the older players still sticking around but and a lot of newer players still sticking around but it's mainly the people who usually play this a little bit casually that are kind of just died off in my opinion so i've put this list into three different sections some of the small opinions that i feel like doesn't matter too much um, but I felt like I should say them anyways. A few medium points, which are ones that is very discussable, and then other points where I feel like it's a really big issue and something needs to change. So I'll start off with the smaller points. So the first point that I'd like to address is the live videos on the discussion group. I feel like the discussion group has passed the point of needing live videos on its page. The first thing you want to see when you open your Facebook or whatever isn't just Anthony Hernandez's face every single time you jump on it. I know that's a bit of a call out, but it is true. There is other platforms. You can go to Twitch, you can go to YouTube and do live videos there. You don't need to push it into everyone's face on the Facebook group chat that you're a good player and you, 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 you can make great plays for an hour and a half long. I like, I don't know how you do it, but I just feel like the live videos on the discussion group isn't something that we need anymore. We're big enough. If you want to do live videos, you can go to Twitch, you can go to YouTube and then put it on the uh, page. But not every single time when you want to jump on the page, you have to see this person's face. I feel like that's something that we can live forward without having just in general. I feel like sets just come and go. With every single new set, your deck will change dramatically and it feels like you have to buy every single set or every a new deck every single set maybe the mid sets don't matter too much like i remember when world tournament came out you didn't need everything in it but i feel like you still needed a bunch of those cards as well um i haven't came came from a magic background a few of my friends have said it's a little bit the same but the main thing is that once that card is printed, there's a very low chance that it's going to come out in the future at all. Um, we've seen Sensu Bean getting reprinted very soon, but it's probably been, what, a year and a half now or two years since that card has been released, and that was when the game was in its infancy. Um, you know, why why hasn't the structure that came out with Sensu Bean? It just doesn't make sense. Um, but that, that that's a whole opinion on its own, you know, something that... A lot of people have already addressed and everything, and at least they are making a stand on trying to change a few things within it. Another small reason uh, that is a very personal thing, I just don't like our tournament organizers in Australia. Um, whenever I've tried contacting them, they're very bland and they're very straight and cut, while they're just leading me on a string like... It's just very cut and dry. So I'll go on to the medium points. So. With all these new sets, I feel like there's a lot of hype behind them. Um, within a couple of days or even two weeks, those cards that have been announced, or once you get a hold of them, they just lose a lot of interest and they become very bland. Um, like, our biggest problems were Janemba. Janemba just ran around for ages, just milling everyone out. Um, and it just became very uninteresting to me. And a few of the other communities that I've seen within the area of Australia, uh, I feel like they'd they feel the same. Um, you know, we'd, we'd have tournaments of upwards of 20 people, and then there'd be weeks where we just didn't have any between sets, where you'd, we'd have three people show up or like four people show up compared to 20 on release. I know that's basically with every single card game, but at least with Yu-Gi-Oh, there's still going to be people at your, your locals. And no matter where it is within any set, there will still be people. Another medium point that's something that is very personal to me, I feel like the banning of some of these cards were very unjust. And the main one for me was Unyielding. Unyielding was a card that pushed aggressive players in a very bad way. Um, with the likes of Bardock and then Go Goten hanging around with blue decks, it was very bad but i felt like there was a way to combat it other than just banning the card outright 
I feel like there could have been other combo cards from your opponent that says if comboed, you, your opponent can't untap. It just, there was a lack of interaction with your opponent other than just counter cards. There was too many aggressive cards within the, within its prime, which made it, which did make it very unfair. But you had other decks like Red, uh, like Red Pan or Hercule that could at least deal with it in a way, um, which was a more tempo-y kind of way. I just feel like there was more that could have been done to keep a card like this within our game. Give other colors ways to deal with unyielding. Give um, colors other ways to untap as well. Because I feel like that's something that every every color just could have is a way to untap and then play a little bit more aggressively rather than just turn one, turn two, turn three. And like build a board, see it get destroyed and then build it up again and then win. That's what it kind of felt like for a while before Super Shenron started taking over and basically just running the entire game. So now I'll go into the large points. A really unattractive thing for game developers to make is a massive rule changes so quick and sporadically as they have in this game. Um, the card, King Vegeta's Revenge, even though a very small thing, it basically just changes a lot too quick. Like, why not just print more cards that do what it does, but the way that they wanted it to? Um, we've seen that cards come out, we don't know how to use them at all, and then we'll email Bandai to try and see if there's something that they can do to, like, give us, tell us how it works, and then they just don't have a response. And then once they eventually update it on the Q&A, it's something completely different to what we all thought. Um, uh, off the top of my head, the Android 8 card, I feel like that one's a very good example. Um, and the fact that you basically have to know everything within on that Q&A to actually just understand every single card is just a little bit, it's a little bit unattractive. Like new players aren't going to sit there and read the Q&A like everyone else has in this community just so they can understand every single card. I feel like it's a very unattractive thing for a for a, a card game company to have, which is such rule changes so quick within this game. Another big point is that within this game, within Australia, there's nothing to work towards. Once you play, what, we, we had a really good regional um, last year, around November, um, but since then there's been nothing whatsoever you know just stores throwing box tournaments and everything but nothing else has ever came out no word from the tournament organizers whatsoever it, there's just been nothing it's been complete silence um and i feel like a lot of other countries around the world is a bit the same america it's you know there's there's a new one every single week and bandai really doesn't give a shit about everyone else outside of America. We all did our part to try and keep this game alive within Australia, but there's been nothing, which probably just comes down to the tournament organizers, even though I probably don't blame them because when we did have our regionals, we didn't see our cards that we won from our tournament for at least a month and a half after when they got emailed to us, even though they had the cards, but they weren't able to give it to us because Bandai never paid them or something like that. I don't know the entire story, but I do know that Bandai could be doing more to keep it alive outside of America. And it's a very American card game right now, unless you just want to play with your friends. Another big point that I'd like to put across is that I feel like these sets cost way too much. Within Australia, I think it's about $150, $160 for one box. Um, I don't know what the comparison is to America to that, but with once you buy that box, it is there'll be a bunch of uh, SRs that are worth around thirty dollars, and then the rest are about two dollars. Compared to other card games like Yu-Gi-Oh, um, once you buy a box, you, you're basically doing a big gamble if you're going to try and make more money than the, the set's worth, or it, if it's going to be worth less than what you've put in. Um, and most of the time, when you buy a box of Yu-Gi-Oh, 
it, it doesn't always round out to be the same if you sell everything out of it but a lot of the time those cards do hold some value so recent ones that we've had so far like the ultra rares like din Gisu being 50 dollars if you buy like if you buy a box and you pull din Gisu, well, that's basically half your box already while with uh, dbs those cards can sit at ten dollars each it's very It's very sad when you buy a box and then you realize how much you can actually make off it. Another big thing is I hate the SRs. The idea that it's one per case and then that's it is so stupid. So if you, between your mates, which is what I used to do, between if you and your mates, if you guys buy a box, uh, I mean a case, and there's 12 uh, boxes in it, usually after the first three or four, the, S, the, the SCR will get pulled. And then the rest of the the case will feel like nothing like th there's nothing else to get from it i had some friends say oh what about short printed cards within like um Yu -Gi -Oh, where if you buy a box there's a really low chance of you getting other cards well the main thing is that there is no other chance of getting another scr if once it once pulled you still have a chance to at least pull that phantasme from the box that uh, from that case that only, usually only has two but the, this should, still is a chance to get three or four from it um it, it, there's a higher chance of still trying to get money from your box now i understand if you just like opening packs and everything um that that's a whole nother situation where it goes into gambling and everything but i feel like these sets just cost way too much for such a little drawback um, now, I guess you could say that is just how the community has received it, but when you look at cards that are printed from um, the, the tournament packs you get, those effects are usually insane. Like we had Demon Sword Janemba, we've had cards like the, the six drop um, Goku Black that came out. Those cards were insane, there, were no, there was nothing like them within the set that that came out in. Um, and I really feel like those cards depreciated the the cost and every card that came from that set because if there's such good cards that you can get from a box but there's even better cards from you can get from the tournament pack you're mainly going to want to buy the cards from the tournament pack than the box so it kind of takes away the price a little a little bit it's very discussable I, I tried explaining the to a few other people they didn't understand but hopefully you kind of understand what i'm trying to say tournament packs are great a few of the box cards are can be good but usually they're, they're very abysmal but the main thing that i wanted to really drive home is that i really feel like the dbs card game is just catered towards america right now or at least the american region i don't ever see really much coming from the uk i don't really ever see much coming from the oceanics and I feel like Bandai has just given up on the surrounding continents of this card game. They will give us things very small compared to what they've given America. I understand if there was a bit more of a push and shove um, within the UK and Australia and the Oceanics. Maybe there might, might be something, um, maybe there's more that they could give us, but I don't feel like it's our job to do that. I feel like it's Bandai's job to try and keep the game alive outside of everywhere. It's just, I felt like they've built this card game wrong outside of America. And it's very unattractive for new, newer players, in my opinion. So that's my opinions. Um, there's a lot there to go over. Um, there's a lot of issues there that I feel like that could be addressed, mainly if we got more support outside of america um but yeah i hope you can get something from this and i'll see you guys in the next video eventually see ya